This simple model only took me 20 minutes to make and it has made me over $100 of passive income. I'm going to show you how I came up with the idea, then I'm going to show you exactly how I made it in CAD, followed by how I monetized it and actually made money with it. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to replicate this for yourself and have the same success I did. Now let's start with step number one, which is coming up with the idea. For this model, I started my search on the internet. I searched Google, Etsy, Pinterest, Printables, Colts 3D, and Maker World to look for ideas and inspiration for a new design. After looking at many designs, I finally found a model that caught my eye, and it was a shark clip that was made made by Muzz64 on Thingiverse. I like that the design was simple and it looked really cool and it also had a function. So I did what I typically do and I determined how I could make something similar but still differentiate myself. So sticking with the animal theme, I searched Google for popular animals. I found a few that I thought would work well as a clip and that was a hippo, a toucan, and also a Komodo dragon. And of course the one I settled on which was a crocodile. Now before I could start designing in CAD, I needed a reference image or a template as a starting point because frankly, I'm not the best at drawing. So this is supposed to be a crocodile? Yeah. So again, I hopped on Google and I searched for a 2D crocodile drawing. I looked for a crocodile design that was simple, but still good looking and unique. And after a little bit of time, I finally found the perfect image I wanted to use and I downloaded it. Now I was ready for step number two designing it in CAD. I started by creating a new sketch and picking the plane I wanted to work on. I chose the XY plane for this design. Next, I went to the top bar and clicked on the insert canvas icon. Then I found the crocodile reference image from my downloads folder and selected it, followed by clicking the XY plane again and hitting okay. The next part was very important. I needed to calibrate and resize the reference image so it had the right dimensions. But first I needed to figure out how big I wanted the crocodile to be and I did that by using my trusty digital calipers. I determined that around 126 millimeters would be a good length and I went back into Fusion 360. I right clicked on the crocodile canvas file in the top left and hit calibrate. I then put one point at the end of the crocodile's mouth and the other point at the end of the tail and typed in a distance of 126 millimeters and hit OK. Next, I used the line and fit point spline tool to trace around the crocodile image. After that, I clicked on the blue sketches and extruded them up eight millimeters, which again, I determined by using my digital calipers. Now that I had a solid body, I created another sketch on top to hollow it out, so it had room to move around later on. From this point, I went back to the images of the shark clip and really studied how the mechanism worked. I figured out I needed to attach the top part of the head to the lower part of the body and vice versa for the bottom part of the head and the top part of the body. So that way it would work properly. The bottom part of the head on the croc was already attached to the top part of the body. So I just created a sketch and cut out a hole in the crocodile's neck to attach the rest of the body parts, which I did by extruding the inner part of the sketch I just made. Now all I had to do was create another sketch on the top plane to remove part of the body that was still connected to the head. I then cleaned up the neck piece a little bit so it was the same width on each side just by using the extrude tool. I added an eye and I finished the design off by adding fillets to the spikes so they weren't so sharp. Now that the design was done, I needed to test print it to make sure that everything was working correctly. So I sliced the model and I sent it to my P1P and much to my surprise, I got lucky and everything worked fine, which normally doesn't happen. I normally do a lot of tweaking, changes, and test prints to make sure everything is working properly. All I had to do for the croc was make it two millimeters smaller, that way it wasn't so chunky. But since everything was working fine, it was time to move on to step three, monetizing the design. There is one platform I like to put my designs on to earn quite a bit of income, but before I could upload the design and start making money, I needed to take some product photos. So I set up my crappy light box that I got on Amazon and I proceeded to take some product photos. Next I uploaded the photos and the design to the site, which was Maker World. Then I took those same photos and I posted them to 3D printing Facebook and Reddit groups 
which is completely free to do by the way. And then I just waited for the downloads to come in. And they did. After a week, I had over $100 worth of gift cards from Maker World, which I chose to spend on more Bamboo Lab products. But if you wanted to get cash, you could easily sell those gift cards, or you could use the gift cards to buy products and then sell whatever products you buy. It's a little bit of a roundabout way to make money, but it definitely works. I find this site to be much more lucrative than Colts 3D or even Patreon subscriptions, so that's why I love to post there. And if you want to see how I got a Bamboo Lab P1S completely for free with not much effort, check out this video here, and I'll see you in the next video.